So let's go ahead and get started. We open to page 33 today. And while we're doing that, we'll take our quick look at the calendar. Today is the last day of new material for this class, for the semester. It's our second day on cryptography. Now, um, I know that at least a couple of folks are having a little bit of trouble with the uh, uh, bifid method. It's a, a much more complicated thing than just a straight, um, you know, like the Caesar thing or just straight substitution. So, um, so I understand that uh, that can be difficult. Uh, we could spend a couple of minutes right now going through an example of that, but what I'd rather do is, is move on to this next set of material. It doesn't rely on knowing how to do the bifid, like whether or not you're good at the bifid is not going to help you um, with the stuff today. So we're going to do what we're going to do today, and then we're going to recognize that on Tuesday coming up, it says TBA. That's going to be the first of two review days for the, t for the test. And so if on Tuesday we just want to talk about uh, encryption stuff, then that's totally fine. All right, so there will be time for us to kind of catch our breath because we've got this extra day built in. Morgan. Yes. Yeah, so the test is going to be on everything since the second test, which is these topics right here. And it's actually going to be on less material than each of the first two tests. The first two tests were on eight days of stuff. This last test is on only six. So still written to be an hour, but less material to worry about. Alex. No, the secret key. Yeah, that's right. This, the actual message needs to be even. The keyword is the thing that, remember, just goes into that, um, that grid. So if you look at the grid, it doesn't make any difference how many letters confidential has in this case. It's really just the message has to be even. Good question. Lucas. I mean, if you got something that made, like, if you got words like you just did, then certainly you got it right. Did anybody else get something that sounded like what Lucas said? Yes. Yeah, I mean, this, these kinds of things are in the newspaper, like we said the other day. They're called the cryptic quotes. Some people really enjoy them. They take time. And if you don't enjoy them, then just, you know, it's not going to be fun for you. Um, but really, it's just about, you know, looking at the frequency analysis and then just trial and error, kind of see if you can... You make some guesses, and if they're wrong and you get nonsense, then you undo and you make some different guesses. It's kind of like Sudoku, where you, you know, like you've got a certain number of possibilities and you try one, and if it leads you to some contradiction, then you get rid of it. But if you got words, certainly you got it right. I don't know if it relates to math, but I was like having a hard time with what type of like three or four letters really getting it. And I just started doing that with the letters, and then I just started like holding it back and just guess the words. Yeah. And then using those letters to find them everywhere else, and I had it making a lot of sense. I don't know if that's mathematical or more like understanding how many different ways you have words. I think I think that's I think you're kind of combining both things together. I think that's a great technique. Is you get a few letters up there, and then the short words sometimes will just jump out at you, and then that helps you get other words. Morgan. Okay. All right, so let's dive in. Again, we're on page 33. Oh, uh, one more thing in the calendar is that uh, if you want a chance to do a revision on your project, you need to give it to me Tuesday, all right? Five days from today, if you hand me the project, I will grade it, I will give you feedback and give it back to you on Thursday. You can then have an opportunity to do a revision and give it back to me on the day of the third exam. There's no penalty for turning it in later than this coming Tuesday, but Tuesday is the deadline if you want a chance to revise. Okay, so here on page 33, we'll go up to the top, number one, and we'll start with Kristen. Two more and the junior and the auto 
Great, thank you. And again, giving credit where credit is due, this is adapted from stuff that was created by James Hamblin. You can find it all online. Okay, number two, Laura. Can you guys with your neighbors answer those two questions? Okay, the five hours, what time is it in five hours? Four. Is it four o'clock? So what we're saying is that if you take 11 and you add five hours, you get four o'clock, yes? Looks really strange to write that equation because it's not true, but on the clock, it is true. And then the other one, in 50 hours, what time will it be? All right, one vote for one o'clock. So if I take 11 o'clock right now and I add 50, somehow it wraps around and gets me back to one o'clock. What's the way to figure that one out? Because 50 is too big to want to really add 50 over, you know, one at a time. How do we figure out 11 plus 50 on the clock? Lucas. Okay, Lucas said a lot of good stuff there. He said that 50 hours is really two days because there's 24 hours in a day. And how much is two times 24? It's 48, which means there are two days left over. And Lucas used another great word over there. He said remainder. So when we're doing 11 plus 50, it's really the same as 11 plus what much smaller number? It's really the same as 11 plus 2. Agree? Because if you just tell me we're wrapping around for two full days, well, what time is it? Exactly two days from now? It's the same time it is now on the clock, right? So if you could just wrap around, get rid of those extra 24s, and then whatever's left over, whatever the remainder is, is the real thing you're trying to add. So 11 plus 50 is really the same as 11 plus 2. And 11 plus 2 I can handle. That brings me to 1 o'clock. Okay, let's go to number 3, and we'll go to Stephanie. Okay, Danny. So it looks like equals. Generally, you say congruent to, but it's fine to say equals. Go ahead. Okay, so let's think about this. 11 plus 5 equals 4 mod 12. That's how we get away with not writing this, because this is plainly not true, right? 11 plus 5 is not equal to 4. So how do we tell people we're working on a clock? We write this little phrase right here. It says, if you just ignore that phrase, it says 11 plus 5 is 4. Not true. Oh, mod 12, meaning on a clock where there are 12 numbers that wrap around. Now it's true, okay? So that 12 is because on the clock there are 12 hours. And that's how we tell people where we are. If we were on a, um, if we were doing military time, it wouldn't be mod 12. What would it be military time? It would be mod 24. And that would be our way of saying, hey, there's 24 units on that clock and then it just wraps around, all right? Okay, Danny, can you keep going? Okay, and uh, I wasn't gonna mention this before, but because Lucas gave us this wonderful word remainder, I will say that the fancy word uh, modulus is the same as remainder. Just saying, what do you get when, when you look at the remainder? Okay, can you guys fill in the blank for number four? Seven plus 23 is equal to something mod 12. Okay, what is seven plus 23 mod 12? One vote for six. A couple of votes for six, good. So uh, if you're doing this, just out, 7 plus 23 is 30, totally fine, but 30 is bigger than the 12 that we have to choose from. So what you can do is just figure out how many 12s are in there, how many 12s are inside of 30. There are two. When I say how many 12s, I'm really saying divide by 12. Right? You can divide 30 by 12 and you'll get two. So 30 is really two times 12 plus some remainder. And that remainder is what we're after. Two times 12 is 24. What's the remainder from the 30? Six. 24 plus 6. 
That six is the answer. Six mod 12. Yes. Yes. In fact, it's really not even 24 that we're doing. It's really 12 that we're doing. Right? You're subtracting 12. It happens that there are a couple of 12s that make the 24. So if you do 30 minus 12, it gives you 18. But that's still too big because I'm only allowed to give numbers up to 12. So I subtract another 12. And we get 6. Yeah, if it's small, then we do this way. But you know what? Repeated subtraction, which is what Patty's doing. She's repeatedly subtracting 12. That's known by a, a more common name in math. What is repeated subtraction better known as? It's division. It's division. What are we doing? We're dividing by 12. How many 12s could we get in there? Two. And then the remainder is what we end up with. So both good ways to do it. Let's take a look at number five. We'll go to Mike. Okay, so the choices are right there on the clock face in front of us. One answer we got here to a problem was six. Another answer we got up here was four. This one we got a one. Could you give me an answer of 18 on the clock? No, 18 is not one of the choices. So it's a little bit annoying, but, um, but let's just list the choices. So the choices are one all the way up to 12. Those are the only possible choices. Every answer has to be one of those things. But it turns out one of those answers we're going to change. We're going to modify it. Um, if I read backwards, 3, 2, 1, what's the next number in the sequence? Forget about the clock. 3, 2, 1, forget the clock. 3, 2, 1, 0, right? And it would be perfectly good. It would seem weird to us. But it would be perfectly good to put a 0 up there instead of the 12. Yes? Instead of saying it's 12.30, okay, it's 0.30. We call it 12. But we could call it 0. And in fact, that's what the entire math community calls it. So I'm going to replace that one and put a 0 at the start. All right? So it's always the last number that gets replaced. You never put the, the final number itself. We're just going to rename that 0. Uh, yeah, 12 is the start. So why don't we start at 0 instead of starting it at 12? OK, so then looking at the blank, how much is 4 plus 8? It's 0 mod 12. 4 plus 8 is 12. We're crossing off the 12 on that clock, and we're putting a 0. You're not allowed to say 12. So this one is 0 mod 12. Do you see it? It's just one change. Everything on the clock except change 12, make it a 0. Yeah, in fact, any mod that it says, whatever that number is, cross it off, make it a zero. Doesn't matter what that number is, that's the new zero. Okay, so it's 24. Yes, so instead of going uh, 1 through 12, we'd go 1 through 24 if we're doing military time. But then instead of 24, wrap it around and bring it to zero. So what's the biggest number on the clock now? It's 11. What's the biggest number on a 24-hour military clock? It's 23. 23. Yeah. It's so whatever the number is, one before the modulus here. Okay. So, yes, Melissa. Yeah, and in problem four, the answer was six. And six is perfectly good. It's only one number that's getting messed up here. It's the biggest one. So, if the answer had been 12, then we would have had to change it. It's still the same rules. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, number seven, uh, we'll go back to Melissa. Okay, so this is what Patty had done. She just wanted to subtract a bunch of 12s, and that's totally fine. How about we take a look at this uh, problem right here, 7 minus 16. Forget the clock. Just tell me, what is 7 minus 16? Negative 9. <clears throat> yes? But negative 9 is not on the clock. It's negative. 
We want a number between one, sorry, zero and 11. Those are our choices. Melissa just read them from that list up there. So instead of subtracting a bunch of 12s, let's add some 12s. What do you get when you add 12 to this number? You get three. Three is the answer. Just add 12s or subtract 12s. You just got to do the right thing to get a number that's in the list that Melissa read to us. Zero through 11. Add 12s, subtract 12s, just get it in there. And what does 3 have to do with negative 9? Well, suppose that we're sitting at noon right now. And then I want to look at negative 9, meaning 9 hours ago. Right? If it's noon right now and I look 9 hours ago, what time is it? It's 3. That's 3. Gary. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. If you, if you don't want the negative at all, just recognize, all right, it's going to be a negative. I'm going to add 12. 12 and 7 is 19. 19 subtract 16. It's the same three that we got. Good. Melissa. You add a bunch of 12s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take a look at number 8. Uh, we're going back to Patty. Okay, so first we're going to change the days of the week to numbers. Now, how many days of the week are there? Seven. But instead of calling it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're going to change one of those numbers. Which number do you change? The biggest one, the seven. Seven became zero, right? We don't go one through seven. We go zero through six. It doesn't matter that we're calling Sunday the zero day. Could be Wednesday is the zero day. It makes no difference. But we'll just make some convention. The important thing is it, it's not 1 through 7 anymore, 0 through 6. So I want to know, let's see, if today is Friday, then what day is it in 33 days? Okay, so let's translate. What, what number is Friday? Friday is 5 in our scheme here. And then I want to look 33 days in the future. So am I adding or subtracting? I'm going to add the 33 days. 33 days from now, and what do we get? 38. 38 is the answer. The problem is 38 is not in my list. So what am I going to do to 38 to bring it down to size? We're going to subtract a bunch of how many? A bunch of what? Sevens. We're not subtracting 12s here. There are only seven choices up there. You're subtracting sevens in this problem. So really this is a mod 7 question. So go ahead and subtract sevens enough times to get the answer to live in this table. So how many sevens do we put? Do we, can we take away? Five. Yeah, we take away five sevens. Yeah, and so now I think some of us are realizing or thinking, I don't want to subtract a lot of sevens. It's kind of a bunch of effort to subtract sevens, especially if the number is even bigger than 38. If it was 380, it would be there a while subtracting sevens. So really, what did we say? I think uh, Nicole told us, instead of repeatedly subtracting, what do we really want to do? You really want to divide. So I'm going to take that 38, and I'm going to divide it by 7. And how many times does 7 go into 38? Five times. And what's the remainder? Is 3. So first I'm putting 3 mod 7, and then I'm looking at the chart and saying, oh, that's Wednesday. Yeah, and number 9, you just put the number. Yeah. Okay. What is what, what? Oh, uh, remainder. 5 remainder, 3. Lucas. Wait, it, what did you say? You said you said it was how many weeks? Five weeks? But it's not five weeks from now. 33 days is less than five weeks from now, isn't it? Oh, okay. 
I think you're grabbing the 38, but if you grab the 38, then Friday isn't 5. Friday is 0. So you've... you've so it's actually 4 weeks and day 4. Six. Yeah, plus 5 days. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, one more of these. 4 plus 22 is how much? It's 26. But you're not allowed to say 26. You've got to give me a number between 0 and 6. So what's left over when I get rid of all the 7s that are in that number? It's a 5. <clears throat> what do you mean? So there's no decimals. This kind of arithmetic, there's no half hours, there's no 15 minutes, it's all those natural numbers. Yeah. So, um, okay, what does this have to do with uh, cryptography? Well, we're about to bring cryptography into this. We just wanted to get a little practice with this idea of modular arithmetic. And uh, I'll say that modular arithmetic is a huge, huge field in math. We have spent all the time we're going to spend on it, but I just want to point out, this isn't just used in cryptography. If you look up modular arithmetic, you'll find a wealth of information online. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to be encoding all the letters of the alphabet. Every letter of the alphabet is about to become a number. How many letters are there in the alphabet? 26. So what modulus are we using? 26. What's the biggest number in our list if there are 26 things in the list is 25. Yes? We're not going 1 to 26. We're going 0 to 25. Okay, and I think uh, we'll get Gina to read 11. Good. On the next page, there's the table. You'll find a couple of copies of this table earlier in the packet. There's one on page 5. I think there's another one on page 4, which was part of the homework that might be in the folders right now. So have that handy as you're doing the homework tonight. Um, 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 okay, and you're also going to bring a copy of this with you to the third test. So you'll have that in front of you on the test. And let's see if we can, um, what do we want to do? So let's uh, go to number 12, and we're back to Morgan. Okay, so we're going to do the Caesar cipher in a way that is going to seem longer than the, the way that we did before. So I'm not saying that what we're about to do is a better method, but it's going to lead us into this new idea of uh, today's encryption stuff. So the phrase is daybreak. So go ahead and write daybreak right there in the top. For some reason, some of the lines don't print out on my version, so I'm adding a few things. Okay, and then we're going to take those letters and turn them into numbers. Once they're numbers, we can do arithmetic. But right now, take each of these letters and change them to numbers. So D is 3, A is 0. A is not 1. It's a big change. Like for years, I, you, you've, you've known the first letter of the alphabet is what? What's the first letter of the alphabet? It's A, correct. But thinking of it as first makes you think of the number one, and that's not right anymore. A is the zeroth letter of the alphabet. Okay. The repeating letters? Oh, oh, yes, you're right. Yes, uh, when we filled in that 5x5 five five grid, we never wrote the same letter twice. Here, you just write whatever the message is. Okay. It's a completely different, it's a completely different method. We're not going to be looking up into a table where we need to make sure A doesn't appear in two different places. It's completely unrelated, but it's a good question. Okay, so here's the idea. Uh, the Caesar cipher, remember, says you take every letter and you go how many places forward? Three places forward. And so I'm going to put down here, I'm going to put down here the answer just for the first letter. Starting with a D, if you go three places forward, 
What letter do you land on? Yeah, so we go one, two, three, lands me on G. So G is going to be the very first letter in the secret phrase. So we're going to fill the rest of this in, but don't do it right. Don't do it that way. I, I want to show you a different way to get this. Like I said, it's not going to be easier. It's going to take longer, but it leads somewhere good. So we already know what the answer is going to be for this thing, but we're doing it in a different way. Instead of thinking of adding three, we're going to say, okay, well, what letter is three in this scheme? Is D. I'm going to think of adding D over and over again. So let's put a bunch of D's all the way through here. D is our keyword. That's the thing we're going to use to help us jumble the message. Uh, we picked it because the Caesar cipher is always add three letters, and D is three. Okay, and then it's going to be really... Well, what I want to do is add, what I want to do is add, I want to do is add three numbers. That's what I want to do. I want to add three to each of these places up here. And so adding three, you're correct. D is the fourth letter, but I want to add three. And three is the number that goes with D. So I'm just going to put a bunch of threes here because that's what all the Ds are according to that chart. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is something mathy with those purple numbers. What are we going to do? We're going to add them. Take those purple numbers and add them up. And this will be the first time I'll say it, but I'll say it a bunch of times today. Anytime you're using this kind of a chart and you are encoding, see how there's two words down here in the next row? It says add or subtract. Encode always, always, always means add. Okay? Encode means add. Like I said, I'll repeat that a bunch today. This is our first time. That's important when you're, uh, because subtract is going to help us in a different kind of problem. Okay, so we're adding the purple numbers. Let's add the purple numbers. 3 plus 3, 6. 0 plus 3, 3. 24 plus 3, 27. Everybody see what we're doing? Fill in the rest. Mm -hmm. We do. So Nicole is predicting what we're going to try to do here. In fact, I'm ready to start filling in. I see the number 6. What number is 6 in the chart? It's a G. I see the next number in red is a 3. What's 3 in the chart? D. So far, so good. The next number in the list here is 27. Is 27 in the chart? It's not. So we're going to wrap around. Nicole's got it right. Gary is wrapping around to 27. But instead of having to wrap around, suppose it were something bigger. What if it was 37? It'd be kind of annoying to like count, like where would 37 be, right? I know, it's shocking. Right? So we're going, to do some, we're going to do some arithmetic here. We're going to do the arithmetic that we just did on the clock. On the clock, if the number was too big, you'd subtract a bunch of 12s. We don't have a clock. We have the alphabet. What are we going to subtract? It's 26. I know we did the funny business where 12 becomes 0. But still, there are 12 numbers on the clock, so we subtract a bunch of 12s. We don't subtract 11s on the clock, right? So we got to subtract however many letters there are in the alphabet. It's 26. So this, whoa, not what I meant. So this guy right here is what you subtract. It's not 25. It's 26. Yeah, so the next line there, let's start filling it in. So the first thing I'm going to do is copy the numbers that are fine. Six and three, no problem. They're in the right space. Let me move this chart up for you guys. So six and three are cool, but 27 is no good. So I subtract 26, and I put it in the box. What do you get when you subtract 26? You get one. Should I subtract 26 from the 4? No, 4 is good. You're only subtracting from numbers that are too big. So we copy the numbers that are fine. 
fact, all the rest of the numbers are fine. Yeah, you're going to fill in the chart on the test. Okay, so any number that's too big, subtract 26, that's the rule. And now take those blue numbers and just grab them off the chart and fill it in in the bottom row. Okay, so I've got my answer here at the bottom in green. That's the encoded message. It would have been a lot easier if we, if we just want that answer, we should have just gone up here and just added three letters every time. We didn't need to go through all this arithmetic, right? It's just easier to add three letters to every one and you'll get this. Totally fine. Okay, let's come down here to 13. It's an important one, Alex. It's really important. I know that 26 became zero, but when you're subtracting, you subtract 26s, not 25s, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, Alex, you can keep going. Can you keep going to decode? That stuff. All right, let's just copy it. So all that stuff goes in the first row, letter for letter. Only for the square. The square is the only one where J gets omitted. And be really careful as you're copying these letters. One mistake and the message gets garbled at the end. Okay, so we've got our message. Then we're gonna, did I forget? Oh, there's four more letters, I'm sorry. I don't have my message. And now once you've got your message written up here, you're gonna find the numbers. So just go up to that same chart. We're gonna use it a bunch today. Change all the letters into the right numbers. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here because, because, because this is the Caesar cipher. That is a very specific, specifically meaning. It's, you added three letters every time. So still the keyword is all D's only because, I'll put it in blue because it's blue up there, only because this is the Caesar cipher. It's very particular. And then we change all those D's into what number? Three. Caesar cipher is always three. So put all these threes here. Uh, it will probably be smaller on the test. But there must be some nice long message that's that's waiting for us here. I'm excited. I honestly don't remember what it is because I wrote this a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, so this is the big difference, right? Before, we were encoding and we added the purple numbers. Now we are decoding. What are we going to do? We're going to subtract. Instead of going three forward, we're going three backwards. And I'll highlight those guys then. Whenever you are decoding, you are subtracting. So go ahead and subtract, and don't be surprised if you get some negative numbers. That's expected. Okay, so we're very carefully doing all our subtractions. I, I just assumed there was. I didn't even bother doing it, but there's no negatives here, so let's make one up. Suppose that the last numbers here had been negative 5 and negative 18. Just making up a couple of numbers just so that we can practice in case it's difficult. So, 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 okay, so... Uh, the only problems that we have are the negative numbers, right? 11 is a perfectly good number. It's in the chart. But negative 5 is not in the chart. So what are you going to do to make it be in the chart? Add what? 26. You add 26. 
So again, it's a mod 26. That's the thing you are allowed to add or subtract. So if you add 26 to this negative 5, what do you get? 21. I know you guys have a lot of practice working with negative numbers and signed arithmetic. So be very careful. It's easy to make mistakes with these negatives. When you add 26 to the negative 18, what do we get? We get 8. Real easy to get those wrong, so make sure you take your time. Okay, and in doing that then, uh, 21 and 8 are in the chart, right? So we've taken the negative numbers which don't have any meaning in our chart. We gave them values in the chart. Okay, you've got all those blue numbers at the bottom, one at a time. Look them up in the chart and let's see what message appears. Okay, did we get the message? What does it say? Long live the queen. <laughs> okay, so that part, straightforward. But it's also straightforward to decode. The Caesar cipher is really easy to crack. It's really easy to crack. That uh, frequency analysis we talked about would be helpful. Uh, if, if, so, if somebody just gave you this, uh, this phrase up here in black, the messed up one, if it's a simple substitution cipher where, uh, in our case, remember it was a three forward, every D becomes a G and every E becomes an H, it's very easy to just do some trial and error looking at the jumble and say, oh, there's a lot of letters here that are the letter P. Well, P is probably then one of the most common letters in our alphabet, which is E, A, or T. We saw that last class. So you just start playing around and try to replace the letters. It's easy to crack especially with computers. They can just run through all the different possibilities and spit out the one that makes sense in no time at all. So let's come up with a better way to encrypt. So here's the idea. Uh, it's number 14, we're going to Gary. Uh, I, I don't know how to say it. Visionaire is what I say, but. Very dramatic reading. Thank you for caring. That's good. Okay. Uh, all right. So first, what is that a quote from? Planet of the Apes, right? Okay. So it was Earth all along is the phrase. Write that at the top. And in fact, why don't we just stop at all because along doesn't fit in there. So it was Earth all and then that's good enough. Oh, did I, did I put, I guess I didn't space my lines out very well. All right, it fits. A, L, and G. Okay. All right. And then we're going to change it to numbers, but why don't we split up the work? Somebody start at the end and go backwards. Somebody start at the beginning, and then we'll just get all the answers. Is that all right? Okay, so we very carefully translate the letters to numbers. Let me know if I made a mistake. I did it kind of quick. And then we're going to put a keyword. Now for the Caesar cipher, what's the keyword all the time? Just Ds. But that's really easy to crack. So now we're going to have a keyword that changes. And the keyword for us here is apes. It's given. So we're going to write the keyword apes. And you still have more things to translate. So we're going to write another copy of the keyword. And you just keep writing apes all the way across. And almost always the word, the keyword is going to break in the middle of the word somewhere at the end. So it's okay if you can't get a full apes at the end of that, that row. You just keep writing apes until you run out of letters. Melissa? Yeah. So I ended on the P. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. And the next row we put numbers. But the nice thing here is that once you've written the numbers for apes the first time, it's a bunch of copies. So it doesn't take near as long to do this part. So lots of copies of the same numbers here, 0, 15, 4, 18, all the way across.
Okay, now don't answer this out loud, but I want everybody to think of the right answer in their heads. You have two choices at this stage. This is going to make or break whether you get the problem right. You have to add or subtract, and the chart doesn't tell you which one to do. In this problem, think in your mind, which one is it? It's a powerful mind. It's just like we heard it come right out. Okay, this is in code. What does that mean? Add. Write that on your reference sheet when you start making it, right? In code means add. So we add these numbers, expecting to get some numbers that are bigger than 26. That's totally okay. So, for example, 19 and 15 is 34. Don't change it. Just write 34. Okay, so we've got all our numbers, right? We add them up. Now, most of these numbers are fine, but some of them are too big. So any number that's fine, I just copy it again. Is 8 okay? Yeah, is 34 okay? It's not. I'm going to skip it. Any number that's not in my chart is no good. The biggest number in my chart is 25. Anything bigger than 25 is no good. How about 26? It's no good. So I'm just going to go through and write down the ones that are small, and I'm going to skip over the ones that are big. We'll come back to them when we're ready. Okay, so all those numbers in black are small enough. So anything 25 or under is fine. Okay. How do we handle the numbers that are too big? Add 26? Either way is okay. We're allowed to add or subtract as many 26s as we, as we want, which is going to help us get these big numbers into the table is to subtract the 26, right? So subtract 26 from each of these. So 34 subtract 26 is 8. 26 subtract 26 is 0, which is fine. That's like replacing the 12 on the clock with what number? 0. So we're just replacing the 26 with 0. So subtract 26, that's a 9. That's a 3. And that's a 6. <clears throat> Any questions on that row? Or uh, this, this one right here? Yeah, OK, so O is 14. OK. Mm -hmm. Okay, just to save time, the last row is really easy, right? You just grab the letters from the chart. So skip it. I mean, it's going to look like gobbledygook, and, but I trust that you can make the right gobbledygook once we have the numbers. So I'm interested in these numbers, and we got them. So let's move on. Okay, 15 says, look at that last example and decide whether or not Visionaire is a substitution cipher, which means one letter always stands for the same letter. So let's come back here, and let's find two copies of the same letter in it was Earth all along. How about the two L's in the word all? Can we just look at those? Two L's in the word all. If it's a substitution cipher, then the letters we end up with down here are going to be exactly the same, because L would always become the same letter. But here, the first L becomes the third letter, and the second L becomes the 11th letter, right? And I didn't fill these in, but are they going to be the same? No way. So this is not a substitution cipher. And right away, by being not a substitution cipher, it's better than Caesar, right? Caesar's cipher is really easy because it's a straight substitution. One letter is consistently replaced by a different letter. But here, the first L is a 3, second L is an 11. You get no information from the 3 and the 11 that, oh, these came from the same letter to start with. It's because we used uh, the word apes instead of using a consistent letter like D. So um, why, did the, why did the letters change? Well, because the first L, you added an S to, right? But the second L, you added an A to. That's really hard to know. You know, looking at the gobbledygook at the end, it's really hard to know. Oh, that one was an S added and the other one was an A. So that's the power of this kind of cipher. 
So let's look at number 16. So in number 16, um, we'll get somebody to read that first sentence there. Greg? Okay, so let's try this one together. So first we're going to put the gobbledygook in the top. Very carefully, every letter. What do we do to get the next row? I'm going to look these guys up in the chart. So we want to have that chart in front of you when you're doing it. What goes in the keyword spot? What do we put here? Tricks. Put tricks. T R I X. And then what do we put when I run out? I'm going to keep repeating. Mm hmm. And you get all those tricks is replaced with numbers. OK, so I know a lot of us are mid-process here. I just came up with a mnemonic device. What is a mnemonic device? Something to help you remember. OK, so I, I hadn't thought of it before. So that probably means it's not of a high quality, but I'm sure you can improve on it and think about it. But just this idea that uh, encode always means which one? Means add. And decode means subtract. It's easy enough for us to just say, oh, yeah, we get that because it's right here in front of us right now. But in a week and a half, when you take the test, this will be a faded memory. So how can we figure out that encode always means add and decode means subtract? I don't know. It's going to be silly. But uh, for example, there's a very famous game company called EA. They do a lot of sports games, right? Electronic Arts. So if you've heard of EA Sports, then there you go. Encode, add, EA, all right? Also silly. If you get a D in a class, you are sad. DS. Also, the Nintendo DS. See, we could do all video game themes. Yeah. I was going to say decode. Perfect. Decode. Decrease. So there's some way for you to remember this, right? Just repeating encode add is not going to be memorable. So come up with some way to make it memorable. That works too. OK, so in this case, we are decoding. So what does that mean? Subtract, decrease. OK, and do not be frightened by negative numbers. You're expecting negative numbers in here. So write the negatives as they come up. I think somebody got it, but don't say it out loud. Very carefully doing our subtraction. What kind of numbers in this row make us happy because we don't have to do anything more? What kind of numbers are good in this row? Positives. So any positive number, I'm just going to copy as is. And then how do we fix these negatives? Add 26. Add 26. You can always add or subtract 26. You do the right thing to make it land in the table. So add 26 to each of these guys. So negative 9 plus 26 very carefully is 17. Add 26 to each of these very carefully.
And then once you've got that, go back to your table and decode that message. Has anybody checked my numbers there in black? Are they okay? Okay. Okay. So we got the secret message. That's a lot better than any Caesar cipher stuff. It's a lot, lot, lot harder to figure out what this garbage stands for unless you got the process. Melissa. Like for the process. I, uh, so the best thing that I could think of to come up with was this table. Like I, I created this table from scratch and I filled in this first column to give you as much um, information as possible. And I think if you just do a few examples, then really the only thing you got to bring into this is this, you know, which way are we going, add or subtract? Yeah, just really careful with the arithmetic. The good news is when you're decoding, if you make an arithmetic mistake, most likely you'll have most of the message right and you'll recognize, oh, those two letters can't possibly be next to each other and you'll know where the problem is, but it's not so in the encoding case, right? Because you're supposed to get gobbledygook, so there's really no way to catch any errors. So be especially careful when you're encoding. All right, let's go to 17 and we're up to Haley. Shh. Okay, so this is going to be really tricky, which also means it's the trickiest to uh, decode. So uh, let's use this thing called auto key. So again, it's a new phrase, and depending on what phrase I use on the test, you're going to need to know which one to use, right? So we've got Caesar. We've got more general substitution ciphers where I say, uh, make every letter the same as the one five letters before, right? I could just make one up on the spot where you just have to manipulate the alphabet. Uh, then we had the bifid stuff that was with the five by five grid, right? And then we had the visionaire thing that we've just finished here. And now finally, auto key. So I count four different kinds of things that we're supposed to do, but you also need to make sure you know which one is which, because on the test, I'm just going to say use auto key. And I'm not going to give you this nice chart. I'm not, I'm not going to cue you into the idea that auto key is this chart, okay? So make sure as you're doing the study guide and as you're practicing, you're associating the word auto key to this process and the word visionaire to the thing that we just did up there, okay? All right, the bifid was the complicated one with the five by five grid, the IFID and then Caesar. Okay, so here's the idea. Uh, we're gonna take this, um, this key phrase here, the message, and we're gonna put it at the top. I'm not ruining anything here, right? You guys have all seen the sixth sense already? Yes, yeah. okay, great. So. So we write our message out. And then getting the next row is straightforward. Just translate to numbers. So go ahead and do that. So if you've already finished, check mine just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Okay, so here's the big change. The table looks exactly the same for Visionaire up above as it does for auto key here, but here's the change. What's the keyword? Sixth. We're going to put that in the keyword spot once. If we were doing Visionaire, what would I write next? Sixth. You just keep writing sixth. This is where it changes. The key is going to change. See, there's something to be said you know, like when we added, we added tricks over and over again, or subtracted in this case, it was the same pattern, right? The same four numbers, 19, 17, 8, 23, 19, 17, 8, 23. Turns out there are ways to write uh, computer programs that can even identify this. It looks complicated, but a computer can, can find these patterns sometimes, whereas we can't, right? But here's what we're going to do. We're not going to write the word sixth over and over again. We're going to start writing the secret message. So right here, we begin the secret message. Bruce, Willis, and you just keep writing. 
until you run out. Okay, now the rest of this is going to look exactly the same as the process up above. Hopefully it's going to be straightforward by this point. But do you see how complicated this thing is about to get for the person trying to decode the message? It's not going to be add the same numbers over and over again because it's not sixth, 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 sixth. It's sixth, and then it's the start of the message. But do they know the message when they're decoding it? They don't know it yet. So how is the decoder going to know the Bruce Willis part? Well, all that they know is the first word is sixth. Well, in decoding, some gobbledygook, they're going to figure out what the first word is using six. They'll say, oh, the first beginning of this is Bruce. And then they get to start filling in the rest of the table. Right? And so they're not even going to be able to do the whole table in one shot. We'll see it down below. But the rest of this is going to be pretty straightforward. We change into numbers. Are we adding or subtracting here? We are adding. So see if you can finish the rest of this. Take your time. Be very detail-oriented. In this case, we add. And check with your neighbors. OK, any questions about this process? <clears throat> So it's the same as Visionaire, except instead of repeating that keyword, 666, you write the keyword only once, and then you start writing the message. Very tricky. I should say very sneaky. I don't think the process is any harder. It's just a very sneaky way to encode information. OK, so the last thing we're going to do is decode. And the reason that decoding is tricky, trickier, is that, OK, we're given the keyword. Maybe we're given the word sixth, but we don't know what the rest of the message is. So we don't know what the rest of that row is going to look like. So let's try it down here. And we're going to do 21, and we'll go to uh, Tim. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's try this. So parts of this will be very familiar. Yeah. That's right, one part is going to help the other. OK, so what are we putting in the first row? Patriots? No, put the, the message there. So very carefully copy the garbage. Any Patriots fans here? Show of hands? Yeah. Good, all right. Good, good. Wasn't this exciting? You want to know what was your guess? All right, so go ahead and translate the, the stuff to numbers if you've got that written out. You're close. Very close. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, just because I, I want to make sure we have time to do this last one. But yeah. On the test, I'm going to expect you to fill in everything, just like you're doing. Oh, and even though it doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, that's just what it is. Yeah. On the on the encoding, you get good information because the answer should make sense. There should be some reasonable phrase. But the decoding, uh, sorry, I said that backwards. Uh, encoding, you're, there's no way to know. It's just it's going to look like garbage whether you make a mistake or not. Okay, so we've got all our numbers. What goes in the next row? The keyword, which is Patriots. So we put Patriots there. Only once, because this is the big difference between Visionaire, which we write Patriots over and over again, and Auto Key. So here's the difficulty. What's supposed to go after Patriots is the, the message, but it's, it's supposed to be decoded first. We're supposed to put over here, you don't copy H-U-I-V, you're supposed to copy what the message really is, like up above, we copied Bruce Willis after the keyword appeared once. So the difficulty here is that we don't know what the message is yet. We don't know what the start of this thing decodes to. So um, no, because it's not, it's not supposed to be H or the number representing H. It's supposed to be the real message. So what are we going to do? We're going to find the beginning of the real message, right? You could do the beginning of the message right now. 
And then as soon as you start to figure out what the beginning of the message is, you're going to take that and put it right next to Patriots. And then you'll be able to get more of the message. Do we see it? Yeah, so we do the next row. We can't do any more on this row yet. We've got to keep going down to get information to help us come back up. Are we adding or subtracting here? Subtracting, this is a decode. So I know we're all working uh, diligently right now, but because we're so short on time, I'm gonna ask you just to, to look up and, and we just gotta get to the point where we understand how to finish. We don't have time to finish right now. So one guess was Super Bowl champs. Let's, yeah, so it's a good guess because if you start translating the 18 and the 20, it does turn out to start off with Super Bowl, right? And so the idea is you take Super and where do we put it? We put it after Patriots. This is the first part of the original message. So Super then gets copied over here. I am not a Giants fan, but I will say I'm also not a Patriots fan. I'm just saying... I'm I'm a I'm a Dolphins fan, and we got spanked last Sunday. Same. All right. So, do we get the idea? Right. Is there's details to fill in, but the idea is you can only do part of the message, then you throw that next to the keyword, and then you get more of the message. It could be Super Bowl champs, or something different. Yeah. All right. We'll do lots of practice on Tuesday. We'll see you then.